Welcome to another episode of the Michael Yardney podcast. Boy, we're getting close to the end of the year, aren't we? And today, it's just going to be me and you. Now, regular listeners know that I have guests on most of my shows, but today there are two sets of lessons I'd like to share with you, just me and you to help you make your property investment a better year in 2024. I'm going to share with you some lessons that Einstein could teach you about property investing. Now, I don't even know if Einstein was a property investor, but he was very intelligent, and I hope the lessons I'm going to share with you will help you have a different insight. And then we're going to talk about nine money lessons for your children. Hey, don't worry if you don't have children or don't have children yet. You are somebody's child once, so there's going to be some great lessons there for you about how to manage your money. So we've got lots to discuss. Let's get on with the show. Welcome to the Michael Yardney podcast, where twice each week you will learn a number of new ideas regarding success, property investment, and money in around 30 minutes. Our show is brought to you by Metropole, who specialize in helping you grow, protect, and pass on your wealth through strategic property and wealth advice. Now, here's your host, Michael Yardney, Australia's authority in wealth creation through property, who has been voted one of Australia's top 50 most influential thought leaders. Property investment certainly isn't rocket science. Now, you've often heard me say uh, it's easy, but it isn't simple. And I guess it's easy if you follow the rules that other successful people have done, following their paths. But it's not simple because most people never get past their first or second property. But I guess I want to point out in today's show that while you don't have to be a genius to succeed in real estate, it never really hurts to learn from great minds when wanting to achieve great things in all areas of your life. So today, I'd like to share with you some quotes that have been attributed to Albert Einstein. Let's see how we can turn these pearls of wisdoms into profits from property for you. So the first quote I'd like to share with you is, if you can't explain it simply, you don't understand it well enough. Now, I think that's true. There's lots to learn about success in real estate. And I know for many beginners, it can be overwhelming. But if you're a beginner, I guess it seems like there's a million things you really need to understand. In fact, not true. It boils down to a few sound, solid, time-tested principles. So don't rush in. Take the time to educate yourself and learn what's really possible rather than getting fooled by some of the smoke and mirrors, the get-rich-quick schemes that promise you millions with no money down or little effort. You know, there's a whole range of new gurus out there on the internet, on podcasts, on TikTok, on Instagram. You know, five years ago, they were flipping burgers at McDonald's, and today they've got a million properties that tell you you can bypass the banks or take advantage of distressed properties. There's other people out there at the moment telling you um, how you can flip properties. So as I said, when you're a beginner, there seems like a million bits of information you need to understand. In fact, successful investing boils down to a few solid and time-tested principles. So be careful who you learn from. Take advantage of the opportunities of this market by learning from those who've been there a couple of cycles. At the moment, we're in new uncharted territory. 2023 brought a an unprecedented strong property market that nobody expected. Remember, it wasn't that long ago that everyone was saying our property markets were going to crash in 2023, and they did the opposite. They were very strong. But now we've moved to the next stage of the cycle. So you need to be getting your advice from people who can see some sense in the chaos at the moment. And having been in property over 50 years, I can see patterns in the chaos that's there. And that's what I want to try and share with you in these podcasts that I bring you twice a week. Okay, the next quote from Albert Einstein is, everybody's a genius, but if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it'll spend its whole life thinking that it's stupid. I really like that quote. You see, we're all different. We've all got different abilities. We've all got different strengths. I guess that's what makes the world interesting, isn't it? You're going to be good at some things and not at others. Hey, it's okay if you're not a genius in tax or structures of finance. Property investment is a team sport, so surround yourself with experts in areas that you're not good at. I know there are some things you can probably do on your own well, but it's, I guess, almost impertinent to think you can do better than having a team around you to help you get to the next level. 
The problem is there's so much information on the internet that's free that people think I don't actually need to pay for advisors. Well, it's interesting. One of the common traits I see amongst the very successful investors at Metropole is they're prepared to pay for advice, while uh, I guess the, the most expensive advice is that free advice on the internet that's wrong. Okay, the next quote from Albert Einstein, a little knowledge is dangerous, so is a lot. Mm. Many first-time investors jump into the market without having a good plan or without having a good team of advisors around them. They buy one of the first properties they come across, often close to where they live, you know, because it's familiar, or where they enjoy holidaying or where they want to retire. And these are all emotional reasons which almost always lead to investment. Well, I was going to say disaster. The thing is that most investors never get past their first or second property. We know that 98% of investors never get past their second property. In fact, 50% sell up within the first five years. So the trouble is most investors fail. The problem is most beginning investors don't recognize that property investment's a process rather than just an event. It starts with a strategic property plan for your financial success, and you're going to need a sound in understanding of some of the property investment strategies and structures, plus a good knowledge of the market on which to make your buying decisions. But there's also such a thing as information overload. I've seen so many would-be investors not take action and stuck in an analysis paralysis Either they're confused by the many, many mixed messages constantly barraging them, or they're spending too long trying to educate themselves so they understand everything. Or they spend too long looking for the perfect investment that ticks all the boxes. I found while these people are waiting for the market to be perfect, the realists are busy buying properties and making money. Look what happened over the year 2023 at the beginning of the year. Those people who didn't listen to the pessimists, those who took action, those who understood that it was a good time in the cycle are uh, sitting very pretty at the moment if they bought the right properties. Just like a couple of years ago at the beginning of COVID as well, there's always going to be people out there telling you not to do things. So therefore, the message here is a little knowledge is dangerous. Yes, you've got to have more than just a little bit. On the other hand, a lot can slow you down. I guess that's part of the benefit of having a plan because it'll teach you what you should do and also advise you what you shouldn't do. And I guess one of the things you shouldn't be doing is making 30-year investment decisions on the last 30 minutes of news or the last 30 days of news. Successful investors have a long-term plan and then they do what they have to do to get there. The fourth quote that's been attributed to Albert Einstein that I'd like to share with you is, it takes a touch of genius and a lot of courage to move in the opposite direction. Now, this is a brilliant quote because the practice of going against the crowd and investing when others are saying it's not the right time. I mean, some people call it counter-cyclical investing, but it's what makes many successful investors stand out. Warren Buffett put it eloquently when he said, be fearful when others are greedy and be greedy when others are fearful. Sure, it's easy to jump in on the buying bandwagon when everything looks rosy in the property markets, when buyer sentiment is high, when the economic conditions are favourable, when uh, the media tells you it's a good time. But you need courage, you need foresight to take action when everyone else is paralysed by fear and uncertainty. Hey, I just explained that about the beginning of 2023, at the beginning of 2019, uh, 2016-17, when the market went down. But look what's happened to property value since then. Making your own path rather than following everyone else's can be daunting. But in doing so, you're going to enjoy many more lucrative opportunities as an investor because Albert Einstein said, and here's his next quote, in the middle of difficulty lies opportunity. You see, just like every property boom paves the way for the next downturn, each property slump sets the scene for the next upturn. Many investors who own substantial property portfolios today sowed the seeds of their fortune during the difficult economic times that were prevailing at the time. I remember during the property slump around the global financial crisis when everyone said the world was falling apart, and in many ways it was. Those who 
went counter-cyclically have done very, very well. Uh, others st- started to grow this, the seeds of their portfolio in 2003 uh, when the market was having a difficult time or the severe downturn 12 years beforehand or, as I said, just even at the beginning of the global, uh, the, the, the pandemic recently. See, these investors took advantage of the opportunities that buyers markets of their day provided and then they waited for time and compounding and leverage to work their magic. I see 2024 as being a year of slower growth in our property cycles, more fragmented growth in our property markets. And so therefore, there's going to again be negative media out there and opportunities to get in to buy the right property. Of course, you can't just buy any property. You've got to buy an investment grade property in an investment grade location. But you've heard me talk enough about that on other shows. Okay, another quote attributable to Albert Einstein. The world we have created is a product of our thinking. It cannot be changed without changing our thinking. Let me repeat that because I think it's important. You know, I place a lot of emphasis on the psychology of success. I believe that's one of the biggest differences between the average investor and those very, very successful ones. So let me repeat that quote. The world we have created is a product of our thinking. It can't be changed without changing our thinking. You've heard me say it before. Your thoughts lead to your feelings, your feelings lead to your actions, your actions lead to your results. So your outside world in all areas of your life, not just in investing, but in relationships, in your professional career, in other areas, your outside world is a reflection of your inside world and your thinking. So if what you're doing now is not working for you, then you need something to change. When things don't work out, most investors jump from one strategy to the next. They try positive cash flow properties. If that doesn't work, they try off the plan properties. If not, they go for the next hotspot or renovations. This is really the solution. Most unsuccessful investors blame the economy or the banks or the market or interest rates. All these are out of their control. It, whatever it is that's stopping you from achieving what you want, won't change until you change. This means to become a successful investor, you must first work on yourself. And that's why I do a mindset message for you every podcast. I talk about the psychology of success. I talk about um, joining us at Wealth Retreat, and that's going to happen again in April 2024. Wealth Retreat is where you go to spend five days working on yourself. And while it's a room full of already very successful property investors, business people and entrepreneurs, please don't count yourself out. Go to wealthretreat.com.au and find out about it and express your interest because I speak to everybody who wants to come along to make sure it's going to be right for them. And if it is, I'm going to back you. I'm going to give you a personal guarantee that it's going to be right for you. So why not put me to the test? To get in a room with successful people changes your way of thinking. So Wealth Retreat is a lot more than just the psychology of success. It's not just about the metaphysics and things like that. We don't even do talk about metaphysics. I don't even know why I said that. But what I guess I'm getting at is we do talk about changing your thinking, developing rich habits. We give you ways of doing that. And then we give you a toolbox full of tools to use your new way of thinking. So I guess You need much more than financial fluency. Sure, you need to understand the economy and our property markets and the way of the world with finance and tax and the law, but you also need to think like a successful person. Also, it helps having a good team around you, engaging a mentor to see your blind spots, joining a mastermind group of like-minded investors, so you develop the right mindset. And that's what you get when you join us at Wealth Retreat on the Gold Coast. Now, sure, you can get information from podcasts and blogs and books. It's not the same when you immerse yourself. And finally, I'd like to share one more quote from Albert Einstein. Anyone who's never made a mistake has never tried anything new. I like that one. The power of all this knowledge isn't in the knowledge, it's in the implementation. It's got no benefit unless you take action. Some things uh, won't work out as you'd hoped. And of course, There are risks involved in getting in the property market. But in my mind, there's a bigger risk to your financial security if you don't. I hope you got some insights from my discussion about Einstein. And if you don't currently subscribe or follow this show, why not just stop for a sec before I discuss money lessons in just a moment And 
Whichever podcast app you're on, just follow the show so twice a week you get the benefit of all the wisdom my guests bring and the occasional shows I have just you and me like this one. By the way, I've got a gift for you for subscribing. Also, just go to podcastbonus.com.au. I'll leave a link in the show notes, podcastbonus.com.au, so that I can gift you a series of ebooks and reports. Now, before we get on to the money lessons, I guess it's worthwhile just looking back how our property markets have changed over 2023. It was a year of two halves, wasn't it? At the beginning of the year, people were nervous, a lot of us were nervous, because the market was picking up, but the media kept telling us we're going to have property Armageddon deal, all the experts, including the banks, including the Reserve Bank, the Reserve Bank that said we were going to have a terrible year in property. By the way, that's not what you heard on this podcast, but the markets are changing again. They're moving on to the next stage of the cycle. Have you taken advantage of the opportunities over the last year when many markets rose by double digits? And are you ready for what's ahead? You see, I believe the next few years will be very, very different years for property. If you're a property investor, it's possible you're going to have to change your strategy to cope with this new environment. So let me help you. Why not turn to the multi-award winning team at Metropole for independent, unbiased property advice? Now, by now, I guess you know we're much more than just another buyer's agent. We help our clients safely grow into generational wealth through property. We're big enough to tip the scars in your favour, but small enough to care. So whether you're just getting started or wanting to grow your portfolio, why not go to metropole.com.au and leave us your details. Now, I don't know when you're listening to this show, and it's probably over the summer period, and we may be a week or two before we get back to you because we're having a break too. But when you eventually have a chat with my team, we're going to offer you a time-tested system, one I've fine-tuned over five decades now. We've got a proven track record having been involved in over $5 billion worth of property transactions. And we have more than just buyers agency. We've got elite wealth advisory and property services, renovations, property management, financial planning, and even mastermind business accelerator with Mark Creighton. Having the team at Metropole on your side in 2024 could mean you're going to outperform the average investor and give your family the financial freedom they deserve. So go to metropole.com.au and book a wealth discovery call. Now here's Michael's mindset message. Remember, a change in your thinking will lead to a change in your life. I'd like to have a chat with you about nine important money tips to teach your children. Hey, but don't worry if you don't have children yet or you're not planning to have any because maybe these money tips will be useful for you because you were somebody's child once, weren't you? Now, when I think about it, there are so many events, decisions and occurrences that I look back on over the years and think, wow, if only I knew then what I know now how different things would have been. Well, it's too late for me, but one of the most important things we can do as parents, and now me as grandparents, is to equip our children to manage their lives more effectively. And one of the things they should learn about is money management, because most people don't teach that at home. Seemingly, though, many of us are reluctant to share our mistakes with our children because we're worried that they may think badly of us. In fact, most Australians don't teach their children anything about money, meaning we raise our children to be financially illiterate. So is it any wonder that most Australians live, well, they used to call it paycheck to paycheck, but we don't get a check anymore, but I guess pay period to pay period. And isn't it any wonder that uh, most Australians never accumulate many assets. In fact, they accumulate more debts than assets. What's worse is what our children are being taught by not just the parents, but the school system, politicians and the media. They're teaching our children that the wealthy are greedy. They've got too much money and this wealth needs to be redistributed. Well, I think that's wrong. But what kind of a message do you think that sends to our future generations? So I thought, Today, as a father of my own, now adult children, and a mentor to many budding property investors, I'd like to take a moment to share nine important steps that you can give your children to make them more financially in control and independent. And the first lesson I'd like you to teach them is that today's debt equals tomorrow's slavery. When we are young, we tend to think in very narrow time increments. We seek immediate gratification and often don't like delaying things. And 
particularly don't like delaying the purchase of things that we really, really want. Now, unfortunately, this leads a lot of people into a credit trap where they borrow money using their credit card, thinking it's their money, it's not, it's the bank's money, so they end up paying high interest rates or they get personal loans and only end up paying back thousands of dollars in interest or forever owing people money. But the fact is that today's debt is robbing them of tomorrow's earnings because they're sacrificing the money they don't even have yet. Limiting your debt obligations when you're young means you're going to have more control of your personal finances later in life and avoid financial hassles, those financial chains that bind you and stop you getting the freedom of the life you want. So the first lesson you should be teaching your children is that debt, today's debt, equals tomorrow's slavery. Another important lesson to teach them is that he who dies with the most toys isn't the victor. Now, look, we all like our toys. Well, I know, at least I do. But the expectation of having a lot of toys is a dreadful enemy of money management. We end up seeing how the other half live, you know, with Instagram and social media and Facebook or in the magazines or on TV shows. Uh, reality TV isn't real, but it, it makes us want to live like them. It makes us think that that's what life's all about. No, that's not true. Consumerism is the new black that won't go away. The truth is possessions don't make for a rich life. It's the experiences you have, the people you spend your time with, the things that money can't buy. That's what truly makes you wealthy. You've probably heard me say it before, true wealth is what you're left with if you lose all your money and all your possessions. So the second lesson to teach your kids, or maybe you, is that it's wrong to think that he who dies with the most toys wins not true. The third lesson is take responsibility and that'll make you the master of your own destiny. Fact is, there's no such thing as rich victims. However, unfortunately, people are too quick to blame others for their own perceived failings in life these days. We've all become a society of litigatious finger pointers and as a result, many people feel they're being unjustly dealt a bad hand. The truth is, if you're courageous enough to cast a critical eye over your life, recognize that you are where you are now as a direct result of your own choices, and then you take ownership for your decisions, that'll help you build confidence, self-esteem, and self-respect. You've got to recognize you are where you are right now because of all the decisions you've chosen to make and the decisions you've chosen not to make. So the decisions you make today are going to decide where you are in the future. It's a cause and effect relationship. It's not the world that's going to change. You're going to have to. So you could have the inner strength in knowing that you're the master of your own destiny rather than handing over power and control to somebody else. Let's face it, they're not going to have your best interests in heart the way you do. Third lesson to teach your kids then is take responsibility and that will make you the master of your own destiny. You've got to be the pilot of your life to get you where you want to get to, not a passenger just along for the journey. The fourth lesson is that of patience and waiting. Teach them that when they fly the family coop, no doubt they're going to want everything. They're going to want a car. They're going to want a good job. They're going to want the latest uh, electronic gizmos. But in all likelihood, they'll have to work their way up the food chain, learning to prioritise how you make best use of the fortnightly or weekly money that comes in. So they've got to understand the difference between wants and needs and recognise that all the money that they spend on those material things that they just had to have today is less money that they're going to have to fund their future years and their retirement. But they also need to know that if they work hard and invest even harder, their purchasing power will increase over time. So one of the important lessons to teach our children, hey, and ourselves if we haven't learned that, is the concept of delayed gratification. The fifth lesson to teach your kids is luck is made through hard work. Many of us like to attribute the success of others to, to good fortune, to luck. Now, maybe they were in the right place at the right time or they knew the right person. So while a handful of people have lucked out by winning the lottery, truly successful people have done the hard yards to reach the pinnacle of their chosen field or their endeavour or, or being successful investors as well. So if you can find something that you're passionate about and make a living, do it, and yet you're going to be far more likely to achieve great things because you're going to work harder to reach your goals. Every day won't be a struggle. 
So luck is when you are in the right place at the right time and recognize it because you've prepared yourself to do that. The sixth lesson to teach your children is you don't need millions and millions of dollars to achieve financial freedom. I know there's lots of property investors up to their eyeballs in debt. Many of society's rich and powerful players are asset rich, but cash flow poor. Uh, So some people I've seen as clients of Metropole have actually built substantial property portfolios on what others would suggest is low incomes. And boy, have I seen a lot of professionals with very, very high incomes spend more than they earn even at those high income rates and not have anything for show for it. So financial freedom isn't really dependent upon how much you earn, but on your relationship with money and your level of personal responsibility and money management. And I guess, as I said a moment ago, delayed gratification, making sure that you spend less than you earn, invest it, keep investing it, letting compounding and time and leverage work its magic and then you're going to have an asset base to live off. So that brings me to the next lesson to teach your kids which would be spend less than you earn and invest the rest. Now I've already just said it but if you follow that golden rule and boy it sounds simple but don't downplay the simplicity of it you're going to be able to get towards that path of financial freedom. So how much should you invest? Well it really depends what your personal exertion income is and how much spare money you've got, but at least 10% and even more should be put aside even before you spend anything else, just like the tax man takes their money out at the beginning of the month because they know that they're not going to be able to get it out of you at the end of the year. So spend less than you earn, save it, invest it, and over time you'll build wealth. I guess the last lesson I'd suggest you teach your children like I'd like to teach mine is your youth won't last forever. So use it wisely. Now, interestingly, in the early years, if you do start investing, compounding will actually, over time, make even those small investments that you make early in your life, when you go to start working, it'll make them quite a large asset. So we tend to see a lot of people at Metropole when they're 50, 55, 60, and they suddenly realize, hey, I'm going to retire soon. I haven't got anything. On the other hand, those who start early and have a long runway, even if they make some mistakes along the way, they are the ones that accumulate significant wealth. So the lesson to teach your children is start saving and investing early in life, and you're likely to secure your financial future. So the message I'd like to give you at the end of this little chat is that wealthy people do certain things every day, every single day, that sets them apart from everyone else. They've got good daily success habits that they've learned from their parents. And these habits are the reason for the wealth gap in our country and the real reason why the rich keep getting richer. Now, we're likely to be the only mentors and most likely to be the most influential mentors our children have. Think about it, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Now you may say, no, it's not, I'm not like my parents. Well, have a look at your par- partner, your life partner, your spouse, your husband, your wife, and you'll see that, hey, yes, the apple does not fall far from the tree. You become more like them as you get older. So unless we teach our children good daily success habits and that way level the playing field, the rich will continue to get richer and the poor will continue to get poorer. So it might just literally pay to give them a bit of your time, a bit of your wisdom, and teach them these money lessons. Well, thanks for spending the last little while with me, and I hope you got some benefit from this show. If you did, and you know somebody else who'd also benefit, please tell them about the Michael Yardney podcast. There's a share button on every podcast app. On Apple Podcasts, there's three little buttons down the bottom, press it and share it, or just tell them about the Michael Yardney podcast. I hope you're going to be doing them a favour, and you'll definitely be doing me a favour and helping me in my quest to make as many people as possible financially literate. Now, there's ways of catching up with me between these shows. Just look for Michael Yardney on social media or why not join my private Facebook group. Go to Facebook and look for the Property Update Facebook group. And I have a way of saying thank you to you for subscribing to this podcast. Go to podcastbonus.com.au. There'll be a link in the show notes, podcastbonus.com.au, where you can 
get a bunch of ebooks and reports. My way of saying thank you. And when you've got time, why not listen to some of the old podcasts? There's individual lessons in each of those that I think would be helpful for you. I'll be back again real soon. In the meantime, have a great week. Make it a great week. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Michael Yardney Podcast, which was brought to you by Metropole, who help their clients grow, protect and pass on their wealth through strategic property and wealth advice. If you like what you heard and don't already subscribe, you'll find us on iTunes or on your favorite Android app as the Michael Yardney Podcast. Watch out for our next show, which comes to you twice a week, and you'll learn some new ideas about property investment, success and money in around 30 minutes. To get more of Michael's thoughts, go across to www.propertyupdate.com.au and sign up for his daily morning briefing and you'll hear from not only Michael, but a group of leading property success and money experts. And just a reminder that the information you heard in this show today is general educational advice and not specific investment advice, as we don't know your personal circumstances. If you're looking for specific advice, why not ask the team at Metropole to help you?